not if I shot him. Who? Gentlemen, he's still on the loose. Is this some kind of joke? I've been trick or treated to death tonight. You don't know what death is. What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. This is going to be the review for Halloween 2, not the one Rob Zombie did from 2009, not the Halloween 2 that came out this year, the original Halloween 2 that came out in 1981. I know that's confusing because this series is a perfect example of confusion when you do not properly name further entries to the series because there's three there's now three movies that can be considered Halloween 2 per uh different timelines and per different routes you may choose to take with this franchise anyway this film was released in 1981 it was not directed by john carpenter again john carpenter never wanted to do a sequel to halloween he wanted halloween to be a one and done and he always felt the character of michael myers had sort of like a uh, an intent that did not need to be expanded upon he felt that that intent of the character was met with one solid film being uh the 1978 classic original this film picks up on that same night michael myers has withstood or he's sustained six shots from dr loomis he's lived and now he's still roaming around the town of haddonfield looking at going after laurie strode uh he follows her to haddonfield memorial and that's where he, his body count starts he starts racking up more for his body count on the night of halloween in 1978 uh, so John Carpenter did not return to direct. Rick Rosenthal directed this one. He also directed Halloween Resurrection later. John Carpenter, however, did write this one. He admits to have been drunk for most of the part or for most of the time while writing this because, again, he did not see any reason for Michael Myers to still be going after Laurie Strode. So sitting down and writing something that you really didn't want to do he had to get through it with drinks. I think it was because of contractual obligations. That's the only reason why he did it. And then him and Deborah Hill also collaborated with the script. And I think John Carpenter had another person work work with him on the score for this film as well. Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis returns. John uh, Donald Pleasance returns. We do not have Nick Castle portraying Michael Myers again, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know who the person is off the top of my head. I don't have the casting pulled up forgive me i do not know who played michael myers in this film so you guys can comment that down in the section below uh but he does he does a solid job he i wouldn't say he did a better job than nick castle but he does he does enough to make me believe that it's nick castle uh if there's certain if you actually watch these series if watch the series and you study the mannerisms you can tell who's who and you can tell uh how the actors have changed over time with each entry there's always someone else playing michael myers jamie lee curtis again back as laurie strode she's taking the haddonfield memorial uh donald pleasance returns as dr loomis he's still after michael myers he's convinced that michael myers is now some unkillable being now that michael myers has withstood six gunshots and then just seemingly got up and walked away like they were legit nothing. Now, the problem with this, and then this is again why John, I believe this is one of the reasons why John Carpenter did not want to do a sequel. But now, he never wanted the ant. Now, as far as Michael Myers being supernatural or not, that was never supposed to be addressed on screen. So for us to see first, first and foremost that Michael Myers withstood six gunshots and he's still roaming around like they were literally nothing to him, uh, that's showing us now that there is something a bit more like there's something driving him that goes beyond being human because no human i would i think can withstand six shots and just continue walking upright like that michael shows no signs of being injured at all uh i think that goes back i think it goes back to what john carpenter why he never wanted to do a sequel because what halloween 2018 does is it it at least tries to make sense of that by having michael myers apprehended shortly after now we don't know what happened after that so we're left to conclude that perhaps they just dealt with the gunshots and that's why myers survived so like let's say myers didn't get apprehended in, a, in enough time he could have likely have died from those six gunshots Halloween 2018 makes more sense out of it. Halloween 2 from 1981 does not because, again, it's depicting Michael Myers taking six gunshots but continuing to walk upright, showing no signs of it having any damage or any effect on him. Uh, that's just one of the things that I had 
I had a problem with this film, and that's I believe that goes back to that's probably also one of the reasons John Carpenter never wanted to do a sequel because of how unrealistic that now looks. That someone took six gunshots. It's not unrealistic that he lived, but it is kind of unrealistic that this man took six gunshots and he's now continuing to walk upright as if nothing ever happened to him. Uh, but everyone in the film does an amazing job. I have a big question mark as to why the hospital is so empty. Jamie Lee Curtis, she does a good job in the film. Donald Pleasance, of course, he delivers in more ways than one with his portrayal of Dr. Loomis. Dr. Loomis is kind of the heart of this franchise, right beside Michael Myers. Uh, the score was solid. The cinematography was good for what it was. Again, they did not have the biggest budget to work with back in the day. Uh, everything as far as the visual effects and the kills Michael does in this film I think those are very solid and they were very gruesome they were a lot I think they were more brutal than what we got in the original film uh, Rick Rosenthal's direction in this movie it's actually surprising to know that he directed if you watch Halloween 2 and then you go back and you watch Halloween Resurrection I think Rick Rosenthal kind of he knows which one he did a better job of and he knows which one um uh, i think i i wouldn't be surprised if rick rosenthal was a little ashamed of what became of halloween resurrection i think he takes more pride in what he did with halloween 2 since halloween 2 is one of the better entries in the series uh again the acting was fine the cinematography was fine the direction was fine the visual effects were amazing michael myers mask i think it's the same mask from the original it's fine it looks good it looks awesome compared to the other crap ones that we get as the series progresses this is by far one of the better masks this mask the first mask from the first film and and uh the mask from halloween 2018 i would say are the best in the series uh this is the film where we find out that they are related michael myers and laurie strode that element is something that utterly killed the franchise now if the franchise because john carpenter purposely killed michael myers at the end of this movie michael myers is burnt to a crisp at the end of this film so if you haven't seen that if you haven't seen this movie already sorry for the spoilers but this movie came out over 30 years ago so i have really no sympathy in regards to you not seeing it uh but yes the film the film ends with Michael Myers being burned alive. Michael Myers dies in this movie. He is dead. He's burnt to a crisp. The intent was to never go back to it, and they were going to go the anthology route. We know how that ended up, and we know what happened as the series went on with Halloween 4. So, what's ridiculous here about the sibling angle is how something so small gets blown out of proportion in Halloween 4, 5, and 6 to the point that they had to reboot the entire series with Halloween H2O. Now, the reason why the sibling angle kind of messes up what was going on is because it takes away what the whole intent of Michael Myers was. It was the absence of motive. You're not supposed to know what's driving him. You're not supposed to have any insight. Now that we're in the mindset kind of of the killer, we still don't, we're not in his mind, but now that we have a hunch of what might be driving him, it kind of takes away from the overall experience of the first film now. If you can ignore these things like I do, it doesn't ruin it. But for some people, they can't separate these these things. So it kind of ruins the overall enjoyment of the original film and what the first film set out to do. Uh, the sibling angle gets blown out of proportion as the series progresses with four, five and six. It takes into a whole entire different route of Michael Myers having some sort of drive to kill his entire family which is completely overkill it takes a simple idea that john carpenter just established in this second film and it takes it in an unnecessary route and it brings a lot of plot holes and other things that i will get into with my reviews of halloween 4 5 and 6 the thorn trilogy but if you guys enjoyed my halloween 2 review let me know down in the comment section below if you haven't already subscribed and turn on post notifications in the description i'll have links to all my social media accounts on my facebook twitter and instagram also in the comment section, I will leave uh, links to my two articles or a few of my articles that I've written. Again, I have news on Jeepers Creepers 3, I mean Jeepers Creepers 4, Halloween 3 with David Gordon Green and Jamie Lee Curtis possibly being involved, and some news on the Chucky TV series. But with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.